So I have a stack of four separate clips here. And if I enable clip skimming, which is not enabled now, we'll be able to see the content of each of these clips. Right now I can only see the content of the top clip. But if I press Option Command S, I can skim each clip of Zion here vacationing in the Caribbean. What I want to do is create a four up display to see all these at the same time. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the visibility of the ones below by tapping the V key. So we just see the top one. And then I'm going to enable the transform tool. Now, a couple of things you might try that you'll be frustrated by, and I want it to, to save you the hassle of doing this, is first of all, you can scale a clip down by dragging a quarter bounding box handle. And that's great, but you're not going to be able to make it exactly the right size, which is going to be 50% here. I'm going to undo that. But what you can do, if you hold the Option key down when you scale, the clip will scale from the opposite corner. In other words, the opposite corner acts as an anchor point and stays still, which is great. The other great thing is we have automatically snapping that turns on that snaps that object right into that top left quadrant. And you would think that this would work perfectly. And you could take each clip and do this, but you'll end up with a little bit of a gap or a little bit of an overlap in the center. So don't bother. It's, it's not going to work. In fact, if you look in the inspector here, we'll see the scale is not exactly 50% here. So you could enter 50% here, but there's a little bit of a trick. Because if I scale over here in the inspector, I'm dragging, it's not keeping that corner set anymore. So that's really not going to work. So I'm going to undo that. So you might think, oh, I'll just go ahead and set the scale for 50% directly in the inspector, and then I'll drag it to the corner. Problem is here is there's no snapping now. It's not going to snap into the corner. So that's not going to work either. I'm going to undo. The trick is to change the anchor point. Remember, the anchor point is the point around which an object scales or rotates. And it's at the center by default. Now, we're going to move that. In fact, I will leave the transform tool enabled just so we can see what's happening here. We want this anchor point to be at the top left corner. So we want to move it left half of the width and up half the height. So this is a 1920 by 1080 clip. So for the anchor point for X, I'm going to type a value in of minus 960. And the anchor point now moves over to the left-hand edge. Notice it's still in the center of this frame. When I change the anchor point, I'm changing the relationship of the anchor point to the clip. But I'm not changing the relationship of the anchor point to this overall frame. That's what position does. So we've got half of it done. Now for y, 1920 by 1080, half of 1080 is 540. I'm going to type 540. So minus 960 and positive 540 moves the anchor point to the top left corner of the frame, but keeps it in the center of the overall viewer here. So our next step is to enter these same values for position, to move the clip itself back into position. So minus 960 and 540. Now the clip is right back in the center of the viewer, but the anchor point is up here in the top left corner. So check it out. Now if I change the scale, in the inspector, it scales around that anchor point perfectly. So I can set it to exactly 50%. And I've got exactly what I want. Now that I have that set up, I want to animate it. So what I'll do is I'll move the playhead back to the beginning of this clip by pressing the up arrow. I'll set scale back to 100% to start with. I'll set a keyframe. Then I'll move forward in time. Control P, Shift plus, let's say, one period for one second. And let us set the scale value to 50%. Now, if I play over that range, the clip scales down perfectly to the top left corner. So now that we've got that done, let's save that as an effects preset. Scale 50% to top left. And I want to save not just scale with the keyframe, but I also want to save those anchor and position changes so that this will work correctly. And I do want to maintain the keyframe timing. So I'll click Save. Okay, so I've gone ahead and created effects presets for each of the other corners. And I've applied them to each of these clips. If we go ahead and play, we see we get a nice, even, perfect four-up display. 